Hey guys, what's up? Filippo here. Welcome to a brand new video. So today we'll take a look at a video that might need some help in terms of cinematography, in terms of gamut compression, and that normally we could approach to it in two different ways that I'm going to show you. So there is no such a better way. Uh, there are just different approaches to the final result, and the best approach is, in, is the one that, you know, define you know, the easiest path and the best result for your client. So I am working in a scene referred color space. The, the clip is already um, converted in Rec. 709. So I just want to maintain a really simple workflow for both my methods. So for the first one, I will add a base corrector. And in this one, I'll just take a look at my exposure, make a little fixture. On the second one, I will be using the color warper and with the color warper, I will be just condensing our color space to a better color scheme. And on my third one, I'll call it DB because I normally tend to use the dungeon burning techniques with layers, but I'll go for parallels for this specific shot. And I'll show you just how by drawing few shapes and few windows around our image and making you know, few tracks, you can just uh, change the old mood of your image. So as the first method, I want to take a look at my vector scope. And as you can see, my white point, it's shift a lot on the magenta side. So what I want to do here is going to my base and just bring it to the to center position. And by doing so, I darken my image. And what I want to do is just compensate this just by cranking up the offset just a touch, just a bit. And by doing so, going into my warper, I will be you know, creating a better scheme. I just don't want to add more points. I am okay with six and six. I'll change the vector scope. And by looking at the scheme, I just want to you know, push my blue towards a cyan side. And by doing th this, as you can see, and condensing the greens, by the way, by doing this, as you can see, we lowered also a bit our blues and the compression that you were seeing on the blue side has shift just a bit. Just take a look at the before and after, as you can see here. And also I want to shift our reds towards a more orangey position, like there. And if, if the scheme will be fine to our DP, we could proceed to make our dozen burning or um, just making other fixtures and just define our image. So as you can see, just by doing these two corrections, we shift a lot our look. In terms of look, by doing our second methods, I want to maintain the dungeon burning as last thing to do. I want to reset everything and proceed with the second method. Second method will be just by, you know, maintaining the old scheme and just helping out what I already got. So what I want to do here is just taking my offset and crank it a bit up so just giving more you no know, breath in this part opening the darkest areas just a bit and on the warper same thing so i don't want to add more points i just want to open my vector scope and on the vector scope i'll do the exact same thing but this time i'll be moving uh, more i might say already defined scheme so on this centered part, it won't be you know, super accurate, but as you can see, we are defining another complementary scam in the same way. And by the way, this specific method or this two specific methods work best, obviously, with uh, shots that have a dominant on towards a specific color or towards a specific scheme of colors. Same thing here. What I could do is just offsetting a bit our center um, and just desaturate some part or just going back on the base. And same thing by taking a look at the center, 
you know, balancing everything out or um, on a more centered position. And by doing so, I will just be achieving uh, true black on our blacks. And the scheme will be, I might say, proper. And this will lo look fine. So this is for sure a better way, in my opinion. It's something more realistic from what they got in camera and what you see now but as you can see what i might need now is a, a little more punch on some parts of our image uh especially on this center part so what i want to do here is just draw a window here a situation like this i just like to use the softness a lot so i just like to wide open this and just soften it a lot and you want to track, you want to track them. I want right now, just because I just want to show you what I will do. But again, just to let you see this, just by tracking the image, it will be really, really easy to define a position. And by the way, for this specific shot, it has been used a uh, crane. So the track will be really, really simple. And actually we can do this by using the frame method, but we want to now crank up a bit the center part. So I will normally use wheels. This time I want to use curves even because I'll be more accurate in terms of attacking specific areas. So I want to wide open the high mid part of a image. So by shifting option, by clicking option, sorry, I want to crank up the higher part, as you can see here, and draw another point and by clicking option i want to you know stick through my midline and just found out where is the right spot where i'm just attacking the zone that i really want so this is cool to me i enhanced that center part then i want to create a parallel and with the parallel we will be working on the exact opposite so on the all image by inverting our key input right here on this one i'll be doing the opposite so i'll be cranking down the highlights i want this really moody shadows here i like that and same technique with the midpoint and it will be working great right here if i deactivate this as you can see we are already balancing our image in a great way to condense this even more, what I want to do now is create a third parallel and thus create a fake vignette. It won't be a vignette because I will actually make more like an upper oval here. But the point here is to crank down everything that it's not inside it. So I want to invert it. And for this one, I will go with the gain. I'll crank the gain down. Okay. A uh, third thing, uh, fourth thing, sorry, and the last thing that I want to do, you just give an extra punch to this centered part. So I will just take the same selection from the center, inputting his ear, and add a glow effect at this glow here, and just attack the, you know, this mid regions. So I'll find the right spot. That is there. I'll work a bit with a really tiny amount of spread. We don't even need to, you know, crank up I, I, all the things like gain or other parts of our image because it's already speaking in a really great way. We could also add maybe more beams from the uh, low center here, but I think that you got the uh, point. So by unselecting this, as you can see, we really draw few shape and the all attraction is on the center. I might have overdo some of this part, but it makes sense. The overall sense of the um, final output is there. Obviously we have done this with, I might call three nodes even because there are two main nodes and one group of parallel that are doing one single thing, even because in the end for this specific shot, I'll be archiving this one as a compound node. So that's why I'm gonna say one single node. And these two are just simple technique to relight and draw shapes to an image that might need 
a bit more help in terms of cinematography and I might say in terms of drawing the attention of your audience. I hope it has been helpful to you and I'll see you guys in the next video.